My name is Mary Ann Hobbs. I work principally for BBC Radio 1 in the UK, but I'm also an international live DJ, and I guess I'm best known as an evangelist for underground electronic music. I'm going to change the world with sound here tomorrow night at Sonar Festival for the fourth year running. Um, I curate a stage here. I'm very, very lucky. It's an incredible experience. It is without question my favourite festival in the whole of the world. I love the gigantic industrial setting at night, this huge warehouse space, you know, that's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it, it, the festival has without question the greatest sound systems that I've ever heard in, in any area so big on earth. Um, I love the audience that come, they're so ambitious. You can really, really, really test them with experimental music. And yet they come in such vast numbers, you know, I mean, I'm looking at an audience maybe 10 times the size of any other audience that I would play to all year at Sonar, at eight and a half thousand people. Um, the weather is glorious, the food is incredible, all the culture, the architecture, the Gaudi buildings, all of the, the kind of events that surround Sonar as well, the off Sonar parties that happen on the beaches, and it's just a wonderful environment. And what I find so fascinating about events like this is that as we all become increasingly isolated working for 10, 15, 20 hours a day behind our computers, um, speaking for myself, you know, all of my conversations happen virtually, be it on iChat or by email, you know, communicating through a myriad of different social networking platforms. And I think events like this are really, really significant because they actually all they draw us together, kindred spirits, you know, to actually sh exchange energy and ideas and passion and to dance and to sweat and to celebrate all of our virtual achievements in a real space. And um, it's unique it, it, it's, and it's really, really important, I think, as we've become more atomized and more isolated by this incredible technology that to a degree also brings us together internationally still it separates us physically for, for a large amount of the time and therefore I think all of these types of events um, not just gigantic ones like this either but also smaller club events are incredibly important in terms of actually reuniting the human species in physical form you know What we value more is innovation and I think what's really fascinating about the, the kind of developments in the last two to four years um, is that we haven't seen anything like it in the entire history of the human race. Um, we're now in a situation where you can make a world-class tune on a PlayStation and unless you're living in Central Africa you can pretty much get access to equipment that you need to make a, a tune that would stand up against anything that Timberland would make if you have the skills personally. You also have global platforms that allow you to bounce that music to the whole world within 10 minutes of finishing a piece of music. You can do that from, from your back bedroom, you know. And then what we find as a consequence of these two things, incredibly cheap, production technology and global platforming available to all people for free is the fact that the creative process accelerates in a way that no, nobody's ever experienced before. I mean, it's just, it, it's so phenomenal the speed at which sound is moving now and, and the creative process is, is traveling forward. It has this amazing momentum. And I think what we value now is real, true innovation um, among this kind of awesome sea of sound that's out there. What we try to do, or certainly what I try to do, is, is actually isolate the things that are really special, really, really fantastic, and, pu and put them on a global platform that's, that, that, that has some meaning as a BBC platform, I think. You know, that, that's what we value more than anything. There was a show that I did back in January of 2006 called Dubstep Wars and um, I gathered together seven of what I perceived to be the most unique, extraordinary producers to play back-to-back -back sets on the Radio 1 show. And I remember DJ Distance um, putting a tiny little post up on Dubstep Forum. At, at that point Dubstep Forum had maybe like 200 members. And within five days the thread had 20,000 hits on it and the word just seemed to travel like wildfire across the globe about this new sound, about this incredible kind of bass-driven, 
deeply physical, spiritual, emotional sound that was emanating out of the UK. And I mean, at that point, you would go to some of the dances in, in Britain, you know, and if 10 people were in the room at Ford, it was a big night, you know. So it was a phenomenal moment for the scene. And I guess it did demonstrate at a smaller level just um, how quickly a viral message could travel um, and how amazing uh, the reaction to something brand new could be globally, almost overnight, almost within a moment. And it was new, it was different. I, we'd never seen a reaction like it. The foundation stones that underpin the major labels are just dropping away from underneath them right now. You know, it's all about people becoming the masters of their own destiny, which is a brilliant thing. You know, every artist that I know is 100% in charge of the architecture of his career and that's a really really important thing as well I mean I think it's enormously liberating for me the most fascinating thing about what's happening in this generation is that people are becoming involved with music production becoming involved with the whole industry because they're more and more and more concerned with the art of music and the craft of music. They're not really concerned about money. They understand that money will come at the point at which they become very talented, very skillful, very adept. But they're drawn to this for all the right reasons, which is because they feel really passionate about creating something unique and something that's new. And that's the primary reason, I think, for becoming involved with anything in this life, isn't it? I mean, I think artists have become used to promoting themselves, but they also like the fact that they can speak for themselves in the first person. And they don't rely on a journalist to interpret who they are as a character and what their music means. They can say it for themselves. And I think in many cases, historically, um, something would be written about an artist whereby a journalist would pick out quite an extreme aspect of that artist's character and he would be portrayed as that one, you know, as almost like a caricature of one aspect of, of himself. And then other journalists would read historic pieces as they were doing their research. And, and this myth would be perpetuated and perpetuated over and over and over again. And even as recently as maybe four or five years ago, there was no way for an artist to be able to break that cycle, really. You know, it was almost, once it was carved in stone, it was set in stone for a lifetime. Whereas now, artists don't need to rely on journalists to define who they are as people. They can blog, they can post on Facebook or Twitter or MySpace or wherever it is they want. And they can define themselves as characters. That they, they, they are no longer subservient to the traditional media in any way. And that's a really, really liberating and powerful thing. Their computer is, I mean, I have a, t a complete love affair with my computer. I mean, I'm completely obsessed with it, but also I know to a degree it's my worst enemy too, you know. Um, I am obsessed with it. I'm completely addicted. I, I I'm, have a compulsive relationship with it where I can't leave it alone. And it does so much for me. It does so much more than any single human being will ever do. And yet it destroys so much of the social fabric of my life and and therefore i have to actively physically seek that out which i do at a place like sonar you know to to, to rebuild some of that to rebuild some contact and you know uh, some communion with the rest of the human race it's a good thing <laughs>